It is the appointed time, so we will get started with the uh, budget committee. I'd like to call the budget committee to order. Do we have any visitors that would like to address the committee? Seeing none in old business, we don't have anything since this is our first meeting. Uh, in new business, we have 4A Solid Waste Sanitation Fund. That's number 116. Um, Ms. Hurst. What I'm going to do for you this evening is kind of do a review of the revenues. Uh, Superintendent Poole is here and we'll talk about expenses in this fund. So if we're all together, tab 55, and we'll just kind of go down the main revenue items here. We've budgeted $1,250,000 in current property tax for this coming year. That's based on a, a steady rate of you know, 21 cents in the solid waste fund. You can see it's a little bit less than what we expect to get this year, but more than what we received last year. We're trying to, because last year was a reappraisal year, we're trying to kind of, you know, get on track with what we could expect. Can you hear me? I'm close enough to the mic. The next, the, ne the next big item is sales tax. And that was a real surprise this year. Let's go down. That's account 40, uh, excuse me, 402110, local option sales tax. Last year, we budgeted $847,000. We've already, at this point, or expect to collect almost $1.4 million. Sales tax, has, as we have talked before, has just been out the roof. And, and that's good for us, you know, collecting that as a county. I wanted to give you a, just a couple of statistics on that. If we did not collect another penny more, I mean, not another penny more, but if we had no increases for the month of May and the month of June, we would still have, an, for the whole county, an 11% increase over last year. And that's a very conservative estimate because I certainly expect that we'll see increases in the next two months. This is going in and out. It okay, is. I'm sorry, but uh, I certainly. It looks like we're going to get about almost 500 thousand additional dollars than we anticipated in this fund. I mean, that's how strong the collections have been. Everything else is budget. I'm just going to stand by. Everything else was budgeted almost at exactly where it was last year. So the big things are property tax and sales tax. Sales tax alone over last year were budgeting at an additional $350,000. If we get down to the second page, we're expecting an increase in this fund of rev you know, for revenue of $384,094. And almost all of that is coming from sales tax. Now, uh, Commissioner Poole will talk about expenses. I said Commissioner Superintendent. <laughs> Okay, guys, I'll, I'll certainly do this any way y'all want to do it, but um, I can go through some of, this, some of these items and then I'll open it up and we'll take questions or whatever. Take direction, too. Okay, um, starting at the top up there and those um, items that involve the payroll, there's a couple of uh, items that increased in a 
another item that uh, decreased. Had about uh, $24,000 of increases and about $15,000 of decreases. Uh, we moved some people around to give them a different title. That, that's some of it. Some of these guys uh, go on and get their commercial or truck driver's license during the year. When they do that, that's an automatic raise. So you have to budget for that, and, and then you have to budget a little bit for maybe having to hire people at a higher rate than you than you pay the, the person that uh, is working when you when you make a change. So, but there's that's a, that's a, that's why you have some of that uh, some of those differences. And then moving on down, you got. Uh, Diesel fuel, we think, is going to go up, just like the the gas prices has and and have, and uh, and the diesel prices have. So, we've budgeted some increases there, and uh, we've added some money for tires and tubes. We figured the tires and tubes would go up too. Petroleum products go up with the gas most of the time, and um, that gets us down to that. Uh, 55, 710, 707 item. The building improvements. We've got, we want to move some fence around to create some more room for ourselves out there. Our fleet's enlarged since we got some new equipment, new trucks in the highway. We'd like to create some room for parking and, and for different trafficking maneuvers. It gets pretty crowded out there in the morning when you got both sanitation and garbage trying to move and get out and uh, get all the stuff on their trailers and in their trucks and that type of thing. So want to move some fence around, just enlarge the area a little bit. And then we wanted to uh, replace the gutters on the building. We've fixed and, and repaired and tried to uh, uh, stop up the leaks for now for 20 years. So we'd like to put new gutters on the buildings, on the building if we could. And then uh, there's some, um, let's see. What we wanted to do was split that between both departments, half department share half the, the financial burden and the other half uh, go to the highway then. We got fencing lighting, light, some lighting, a little bit of lighting. We'll change those fluorescent bulbs to the LED. That's a much better light. And we have done some of that already, but we want to continue to do that. So we figured about $80,000 for fencing and gutting and lighting, and we split it up between the two departments of 40 apiece. And then uh, the big item uh, is the motor vehicles. Y'all know I've been up here asking for more, mo more money to maintain and repair these vehicles we've got. We've got a fleet that's got a couple of trucks still in the regular run. They go every day, and they're it's taking more and more money to fix them, so we can either do that or we can buy new vehicles and move those vehicles into a spare status, whatever your pleasure is. You know vehicles, you're going to spend money one way or the other. You can put it up front or you can pay it as you go. So the, the important thing for us is downtime. When we're having to take that vehicle down to make it to, to repair it, it, it's costing us one way or the other. So, what I two vehicles, two, vehicles, two, two garbage trucks. Two garbage. Yeah. That's the three hundred and twenty thousand. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that'll cover those. That'll get that'll get our regular fleet in good shape. Those those trucks that run every day. We got five garbage trucks, one recycle truck, and then we try to run at least five brush trucks, six if we can. So. Those five garbage trucks that run every day, there's a couple of vehicles that are 08, 09 models. They get, get to be about 12 years old, and they're, they're really costing us. What does it cost to run a recycle truck a year? Crew, truck, trailer, and the top Well, I don't know that we've paid a recycle bill that amounted to anything, probably less than $10,000. You know, we used to pay for somebody to take it and then they take it and sell it. Well, we don't, that was about $80,000 a year. We don't pay that anymore. Um, so what do we do now? We take it to the landfill and, and somebody takes it to Knoxville and uh, and I don't know if, if Bill could tell me exactly what the bill is. Dan, can you? So far, so far this year, we haven't been having a bill. 
So we, but, we're not paying to have it hauled from the landfill. But for the upcoming year, we've got notification from the city that we've needed to budget $15,000 for next year. So and it's shrunk from 80 down to 15 if that's what we pay this next year. So I know metals, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. I know metals not worth a lot. That, this item right here. Yeah. But if they're willing to it from here to Knoxville, there's got to be some monetary value to that. Would that not better benefit us to? To try to sell it. Better to put it, better not to put it in the landfill. And then we don't put it, yeah, on, on top of that, we don't put it in the landfill and we get a few, Cents off of it. But now I don't know that it includes metal, does it? This is just the uh, side of the road recycling, isn't it? Well, this is plastic and, and cardboard. I don't think glass sells anymore. I don't think you can get glass there's a market aluminum. on glass. Aluminum. aluminum. I'm not sure. I, yeah, there's a market for aluminum. But we'd have to sort it out, right? Yeah. I think we need to look at that. I mean, does that recycle truck run every day? Yes. Does well, the east end having one, one? Yeah, I see. What you're does the east end on one week and then the west end on the other, and then it starts over again? And, and even on top of that, the recycle truck saves landfill space, right? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that. I'm just, yeah. I'm just wondering if we're putting things in a landfill that we could keep out of the landfill. Even if it's a break-even proposition, yeah. uh, financially we win in the end because of the uh, savings on the landfill. I think we need to study that and look at that and, and see what we need to do about. And then, of course, it'd be in your domain on how we sort it out and transport it. And of course, we'd have to come back to the table on financing. But I'd like to see us salvage some of our landfill. It's not going to be just an exuberant. I don't know what the prices for the different materials would be. When you talk about sorting, you talk about having to have somebody do it. Obviously, you pay the labor for that. And then um, I don't know if they require bales or if they require it in bags or how they require it, you know, when you take it to sell it to somebody. Um, but uh, We had a baler at one time, didn't we? There was a baler out there. That's all been abandoned. They, um, I know... According to our estimation, the participation of the public in the recycling program is 25% or less. So, really, if we're going to do something like that, we really need to um, encourage and advertise and, and push people to, re to recycle. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's, let's the bottom see. dropped out of the market, too. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying, let's keep it out of the landfill. It's a big thing. And if we can do it at a break even or, or very little expense, I think it's something we need to investigate and go forth with. You want me to? already buying, Wayne Lift is already buying your metal and your aluminum from the, from the, out there at the landfill. They separate, take it out, and make, they, get, they get the money off of it. It's, it's not, it's, it's not sold. In the, in the, uh, oh, it's not? No. Okay. Uh, aluminum and metal, neither one of it. Good. Good. So the, and there's no market for plastic right now, is there? I don't think so. That's the last I heard is that no market, nobody wants it. Well, now, Wayne, <coughs> is that, uh, you say some of the landfill staff takes takes the metal to Wayne's, uh, Wayne's place yeah. there? Yeah. Who's getting the money for that? I haven't been out there in a year or so, but it used to be around the side. You take Back when they went to the company, when they was in there, before it went to the bailer, they see a bicycle, they'll throw it over. Yeah, now I see the metal back there. Well, I'm talking about aluminum cans and, and that sort of thing. He buys aluminum cans. Where'd that money go? Yeah. Well, it, it's a joint venture between the county and the city. The one that but does the, the does the landfill entity sell it to Wayne, or does he pay for it when they, they take it to I've him? I've seen it both ways. I've, I've seen I've, I think I've seen your trucks out there with it. Well, yeah, with well, scrap metal, if we have scrap metal, we take it out there. Yeah, that's what I say. Well, where's the income from that? Yeah, we're we put it back in the, the fund, 131 or 116. No, I'm talking about what they take out there. I don't know. What the takes out there. I don't know. Because, see, that's a separate entity. Yeah, I understand that. I'm just saying. Yeah, we, need to, we don't know where the money's going. 
And can that offset the cost of the trucks, the vehicles that we're having to replace? Well, as we yeah, go? I mean, I'm not saying everything's got to be within bounds of reason, and I'm glad we're not putting it in the landfill. That's a plus. But if we can get everybody, uh, you know, 75% of the county on, on board with recycling, we can we can not fill up the landfill nearly as fast. And I'm thinking with petroleum the way it is, plastics might start coming back on the scene as far as the recycle product. Uh, and so where is that? Is that funding collected from Sunoco and going back into the general fund? Not that I'm aware of. No, not, not, not that I'm aware of. On the first on the page, we've got anywhere from, yeah. we've got anywhere from $4,700 like about three years ago. I'm sorry, say again. I'm sorry. We've got about $4,700 about three years ago. This year we expect more on that, uh, about 12000 that's the sale of materials. That's mostly what it is. Is it broken down by type of materials? Not that I have here. We might be able to go, go back to the individual deposits and determine that, but not, not, from, not from what I have here. A lot of, it sounds like a lot of these questions could be answered by the land, the solid waste board. Looking at their budget. Well, also we got we got, and this is what always confused me being in the tire business. We take tires out there. We pay up to seventy-five dollars per ton. They don't take very many tires because it's a ton of tires. And then they, we put them in a certain, certain area up there, and they sell them to a vendor out of Knoxville or Nashville or wherever they come to get them. And I understand they pay for those that rubber because they shred them, take the metal out of them, and make mats and whatever. <coughs> It's like, where's that money go? Yeah. So to me, it's all the way for getting it from both ends. Yeah. You know, getting it from us plus whoever buys it. Yeah. Go to your solid waste board meeting. Come on, man. I did. But <clears throat> um, that's, that's what I would propose. It would be a lot less downtime for us to get new vehicles on board. Um, you know, everybody's philosophy on vehicles is different. Some people buy brand new vehicles, some, buy, some people don't. They buy a vehicle that's a couple of years old. Some people run the wheels off of them. Some people buy one every five years, ten years. You know, everybody's got different philosophy, but for us, the downtime is the most important issue. Right. Most of your garbage trucks right now are out of warranty, aren't they? All of them. All of them. Okay. Yeah. Could could you repeat uh, with these two new ones? You're, you're going to uh, have two for backup. Is there any that will be surplus? We could surplus. Yes. No, I'm I'm, I'm not asking you well, to. I'm I'm wondering is that one yes, of Yes, because we've got spare vehicles now. Okay. That okay. we could surplus. So they will surplus a couple of vehicles. At yes. Point. Any idea what that's worth? I would say we'd be lucky to get five thousand dollars for them. Gotcha. Ten thousand, maybe. Okay. I apologize if that's a bad uh, guess. No, it's, it's <laughs> just, I was curious as you know what maybe get back from them. Yeah, I may not be a good person to ask that. <laughs> Some of these guys that trade vehicles, you know, yeah. yeah, they they tell you what vehicles are worth, what you're gonna get for them better. That dump truck that we're trying that we have on the gov deals right now. Um, we looking into it got down towards the end a couple of couple of days was all we had left on it I think we had like a six thousand dollar bid and we know we could sell that engine for ten thousand mm. dollars and we could park that vehicle out and make a lot more money than we're we were about to make on gov deal so we're we backed up we we're going to look at maybe if we have if it's legal to part it out, then it might be best to sell that vehicle in parts. Yeah. Um, so we stopped that gov deals, yeah. or <clears throat> we might put it on gov deals again and have a minimum of 
twenty thousand dollars or whatever. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna be back on that, but you know, it, those those vehicles is <clears throat> as used as they are and as old as they are, and and for what they are, they they're not gonna get a whole lot. I don't think those garbage trucks are not. Gotcha. Barry, I know that the city is changing over the garbage trucks. <laughs> they put all new cans out there uh, about a month ago. We got yes. new ones in our place. And uh, Jim, you was talking about uh, they're going to buy the truck that has a side thing that picks up. Yeah. Where the <clears throat> guy, I guess, sits inside the truck and, and he can direct that thing. And it's yeah. just one person driving it. Yeah. And it made me think about that. They may cost a bit more, but. <clears throat> Here we're fixing to spend three hundred sixty thousand dollars for new trucks, and I'm just wondering if that's something in the future that we're going to go to, the, like the city's doing. Yeah. And are we need to th be thinking about that now rather than spend another truck for that is the old style? Well, I think the city's you know they're pretty convinced that's the way to go for them, and it would probably work in subdivisions for us. I mean, yeah. we got a lot of subdivisions. Right. Oh, yeah. We could put those trucks in, and I, I think as there's what I'd like to do, um, is watch the city for two or three years, make sure it's saving them the money they think it's going to save them, that it operates like it, you know, it's thought. To, I mean, I, they've went up to Kingsport and looked at their operation right. and stuff, so they feel like they're making a good decision. Might be a good decision. I agree. Well, I just something that we just need to think about because three hundred fifty thousand dollars. It may cost you another hundred thousand and have two trucks that are new system. And now these uh, trucks that we're looking at are uh, about a hundred and forty thousand dollars a unit, hundred and forty to hundred and sixty. This trucks the city, these trucks the cities are getting, I think they're looking at uh, three over three hundred thousand dollars, aren't they, Jim? Yep. So they're triple truck, what we're buying. They're expensive, but uh, there's a lot of advantages that you have, but I one thing that you take away is the most dangerous job there is in the United States. Yeah, that's, that's a man off the back of that truck. He's a he's a target. And, and the insurance, uh, the insurance, too, and, and really, that's why really, I was really curious. Hard. Does it does that help us on the insurance if we went to that? Well, we call it the one arm bandit. <coughs> what we yeah. call it. Does that help us on the insurance? On does that matter? Of course, it does when you have you have no longer have an employee back there. Yeah, uh, that money is going to help pay for that truck. Yes. Uh, you, I don't know how many years we're, I think they're, I don't hold me to how many years they're looking for that truck to to last them at least six or seven. Yeah. That's just my guess. But well, um, do you, it has do, advantages also with the larger truck. It holds more. It keeps you out there on the route more yeah. other than making trips back and forth. Well, Is that what you've seen? Have they estimated how, how long it'll take to pay off? In other words, if you spend triple on the front end, it five years later that it pays itself back because you're saving employee and all that stuff or the 10 years or three years what do you know do you know no i do not wouldn't it be prudent for us to find those answers out before we vote on these two trucks i think so tonight? uh mr chairman i'd like to uh request that and uh research this recyclable issue and notify all of us by email, please. And you got that as a motion? I second. Well, if you need a motion, I'll okay. make that no, motion. I, I, yeah. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? <coughs> table that one. So we're going to table purchasing any new trucks do we see are we going to watch the city a couple of years or are we going to try to just get are we going to ask them what their answers are at this point without even having a truck on the road and, and trust that or how are we going to proceed from here i think we can go with more disjointed cities you said maybe in kingsport and in different places like that i think somebody could get some figures on, on what they're already doing and uh, come back with some hard more things we were talking about you know i don't think it'd be hard to get that information say within the next month okay. don't you think it <clears throat> on, on that issue that we need to study that issue for at least a year uh, yes sir 
you know, uh, you, you know they need they need, the need garbage trucks, trucks now. now. Yeah, yeah, we need trucks uh, now, but but and, and also the, to implement that, wouldn't it take? Uh, I mean, by just adding one or two of those new ones, it doesn't help. We have to do the fleet, don't we? If we if we do that, or how how would you implement that? Well, here's here's my my <coughs> biggest concern out on these country roads is where do they put their cart? And I don't know how far these, as you say, one armed bandits reach. What their what that capability is, but if it's down the driveway 12 feet, can we reach it with that truck? Mm -hmm. um, now, in a subdivision, I think. I don't know what you you what the city's thinking, but I'm assuming you got to train people so that they set it right there where where you can reach it easy. It takes every a lot week. of cooperation. And so, you well, know, it works, it works in the city. Yes. Yeah, but county's a lot different. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. At all. County's a lot different. You know, but in road, sub, subdivisions, you know, you know, yeah. yeah. the road hey, I Bert, live on is. Do you know uh, of any rural areas that are using that? No, I don't. Yeah. That's our big thing. Yeah. Is you know good well maneuvering that big truck around because like jim said it's a larger truck um you've got you know kingsport is just small roads it's in the middle of the city everything's packaged together i can see it benefiting them but for us and the drive getting through there i think we need to go ahead with these trucks and look at it we always need to keep our options open for something better but um because if my understanding is correct, that replaces all the cans as well, don't they? No. It require we, a different can? We won't have to because when we bought our carts, we made sure they'd work on an automated system. Great. Thank you for thinking ahead on that. <clears throat> they, they did have to repurchase all their cans, so we're okay there. One other thing for me, Mary. <laughs> Go ahead, Howard. I was going to point out the mayor has made a recommendation to us on how to fund these two trucks, mm -hmm. which I think was a good recommendation. Uh, and I understand he's in a meeting right now uh, dealing with the uh, uh, rescue, federal rescue money. Uh, we might be able to pay for garbage trucks out of that. I don't know. Yeah. But, uh, if, I think they need the trucks and we need to. Absolutely. Need to. How long does it take to get these trucks? We order them today, six months? It could be longer now with the virus affecting <clears throat> things like that. And I, and I, appreciate that but if you wanted to wait a couple of months and we were in next year's budget we could do it a budget well, i mean we could do a budget amendment then if you want to get some answers now, i don't know if, if you do or not but i think we need to proceed myself that, that was going uh, one question i had to add to this if we get these two how long before you'll need the next batch you know, when, when, I mean, just estimated time, I'm not going to hold you to it. I'm just curious if we get these two, you know, with the discussion we're having and maybe implementing yeah. the new style, how long before that comes? I, I think, I think this, these two will, you know, get us another four or five years. Yeah, six years. Because the other trucks are, you know, they're, they're fairly new compared to these two that we need to replace. Time to, uh, to figure it out. Yeah. And see how the city is. You're still going to need. You're still going to need a rear loading truck. Yes, more than one. Yeah. Because these automated trucks will only work in subdivisions. Would you agree with that, Jim? Yes. So, <coughs> city streets and subdivisions. City streets and subdivisions. <laughs> well, for the city. It's like like roads. A house here, and then there's another house 100 yards on down the road. Yeah. yeah. This has come a long way. I can remember there used to be two men on the back end garbage trucks. Yes. Picking them things up and dumping. Yeah. Yes. And would this eliminate that man? If you're going down Third North Street mm -hmm. and the people put their carts out there where you could get them and had them turned the right way and didn't have them that way back or where they couldn't get them, you're, de you're dead in the water if you're not. If you're not right there, we well, pick them up. Yeah. This arm, if that arm won't reach out and get them, you're in, you're in trouble. Yeah, it's going it's it's to take, it, it probably took some training to train the people how to use these things. I would think if you left their garbage there a couple of times, they'd learn yeah. quick. <laughs> that gets their attention. No doubt. Uh, 
Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve his budget request. I'll second. Okay, we've got a motion and a second. Does anyone have any further discussion? If not, all of hey, I got this good. How many how many trucks you got right now, Barry? We got uh, five garbage trucks, one recycled truck, and six brush trucks. Okay, so you got five garbage trucks and one recycled truck. So you got two six minutes. trucks. That's all we got out there. Garbage. And the and the brush trucks. I mean, garbage trucks. Yeah. You got six. We got right we got two spares on the garbage so, trucks. So you got eight out there now. Well, the spares are, are sitting yeah, at the lot. What you using plus the spares you got out there? Yes. <clears throat> and those, good enough, they work, don't they? The spares, if you use them for a day, you got to spend another day fixing them. Looks like you need another garbage truck. You just got one garbage truck? I mean, uh, uh, brush, brushed. Six. Brush truck. Six, 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 brush six brush trucks one and then one one spare. So seven total, but we try to run six if we have fully staffed and everything's okay with it. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? If not, all in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Uh, aye. aye. Any opposition? Motion carries. Yeah, 360. 320. 320. 320. You made that move. How much is each truck? 325. No. That's total for two. Two trucks. Okay. On uh, 4B, Public Works, Highway and Public Works, 131. That's tab number 57. At some point, I know in talking with Joe, he's got, he had some interest in our paving projects this coming year. Um, we've got Three Springs Road ready, a nine tenths of a mile of, of Three, Springs, Three Springs Road ready to pave. We're getting a mile and a half of uh, St. Paul ready to pave right now, and it should be ready in another week or two. And so before this budget uh, is over, this one we're in, we'll pave. St. Paul and Three Springs, and then we'll move to Collinson forward, um, and then um, we will move to um, McBride, Bright's Pikes. Got some places out there. We had done uh, some some locations in on Bright's Pike to help that years ago, but just the stuff like that. We're going to try to get 10 miles done this year. There's money available to do 10 miles, uh, and we have contracted some services to help us get ready. Um, we either, most, most of the time, our repairs involve excavating about a foot deep, putting eight inches of stone back, four inches of new asphalt, and then we feel like that, that'll stand up when the traffic hits it. We go, and in the end, we put two inches of asphalt to cover, you know, to resurface. So we feel like that repairs are weak areas. A lot of wheel pass, outside wheel pass, will require some milling because the outside wheel pass, they take the, the most wear and tear uh, by vehicle. So we'll mill a lot of places out. So our repairs involve either excavation or just milling a couple of inches of asphalt off, putting new asphalt back. We contract some of that uh, with the Road Commission has agreed to spend about 20% of our paving budget on contracted services. They helped us out on Three Springs. They did nine-tenths of a mile for us. It cost us about $160,000. They're helping us out on St. Paul Road to the tune of about $100,000. So here in, an, in the last six weeks, we, we will have spent two hundred dollars to $260,000 on contracted services. Now, they helped us get things ready a lot quicker, but you got to save money for paving for the new asphalt. So you can't just keep going with contracted services. So this point, from this point on, we'll be doing the prep work with one of our crews 
and we'll be doing the maintenance work for the potholes and other things involved with the other crew. So uh, Joe was asking about the, about the hot box. So that'll, we, we send that hot box out for the road for the preparation too because it gives us three more tons of asphalt to put in those areas where we're repairing. Uh, we put it in the truck bed and in the hot box and then you can use the, the, uh, the asphalt in the hot box uh, last because it stays hot for you. So that's sort of the procedure and that's sort of the money we've got available. We've got anywhere between 1.3 million and 1.5 million to pay with. We've, uh, we will have spent 250 to 260,000 already on, on contracted services. So it's gonna slow down, but we gotta save that money for the new asphalt, the new two inches asphalt that goes on these roads. So um, I know Joe was interested in that and that's sort of where we stand. And I, what we're trying to do is we like three Springs roads on the east end. St. Paul is out in the south. We'll go to the west and do one. We'll go to the north and do one. And we just try to move around the county so everybody sees something for the tax dollar. Um, I know out on Spout Springs Road, there's a lot of development out there. Tim, the Carlisle's putting in that big subdivision. There was always, there's already uh, that subdivision that uh, Don, put, Don Bunch put in several years ago. Um, just seems like that area is developing. And I think a lot of people out there are getting interested in us widening and, and paving Spout Springs. So that's sort of on the short list too. We'd like to do that. You may be hearing more about that from what I understand from some of our constituents. But um, that's what we're doing. East, south, west, north. We're just trying to move around and do different things. There's plenty of candidates for paving out there. Y'all know that as well as I do. So, um, you know, I don't, I don't mind you guys tell me what your priorities are. I know what the road commission's priorities are. And there was, Joe, had, we'd, I'd given y'all a copy of those roads maybe six months ago or so. Of those roads that out of, out of 10 would rank three or less. Well, that's the ones we're doing. That list is what we're working on, and I can bring you a list back that shows you which ones we've done. So, that's the but that's the list we're working on, Joe. Um, and you know, you get a lot of this guy wants his road done. This guy wants his road done. Well, you consider the population. You consider, consider the traffic count. But what you're accused of is the guys that's got the money over there on that side of town. That's the ones you help out. So. That's not the case. We're spreading it around. Um, any questions about paving? Anybody? Is want? it still roughly 135,000 a mile? Yeah, more? that's about right. Maybe going up since all this asphalt. Our prices place. didn't go up too bad. We've got our annual bid back in hand. In hand now, we know what we're dealing with with asphalt prices, so they didn't go up too bad. Not not much at all. Do you have a severity scale that you use to decide which holes are going to get patched first or location? Well, in terms of potholes and maintenance, we just, we're just trying to work the whole county. We notice there's, that things are more severe over in the west than they are in the east or vice versa. That's where we, because we, I told you we got one team that's working on road preparation, one team working on maintenance. We used to have one team that worked on both. So potholes have gotten filled a lot quicker this year. Now, I'm not saying 100% of them have been done, but I'm saying they have gotten, because we had two teams on them for six weeks. So they've, they've, um, they've gotten filled a lot quicker. But now I've got to, I've got to break off that team and get things ready because this paved. And, you know, to stay on this line of thinking of paving, we've got plenty of money this year, guys. But we won't after that. And if I were y'all, I'd try to put a little money away every year for paving. If you put $300,000 in there this year or half a million dollars in there this year, add the same thing next year and keep us a little budget going. Because I'm just, I let the fund balance bill the only reason we got money for paving. I just, I know y'all feel like I'm always up here asking for money, but I'm, we have let the fund balance build. 
it's built from in the last five years the fund balance is built from four hundred thousand up to one point six mm. and i knew we, we were going to have to if we ever did anything significant in terms of paving and of course we got the gas tax increase from nashville that helped that some too we're getting an, another six hundred and sixteen thousand dollars a year or roughly that off of that tax increase that nashville passed so but you can easily spend six hundred thousand dollars a year if you're not careful on this and that. Y'all know that as well as I do. So that's that's the request I would make for you guys. I know you got a jail to to consider, but I'd be trying to put some in this kitty over here to keep paving going all the time. If you could do ten miles a year in the next forty years, we could do it all. <coughs> Four hundred roads in ten miles a year. All right. Mary, one of the biggest complaints they have, and they did this survey, and Rhodes wasn't on that survey. But when it comes down to the end of it, the number one problem we've got is Rhodes. It wasn't on the survey that, that Bill took. Well, you think about it, it's the biggest asset the county has. Yes. I mean, it costs a whole lot more than a jail, and, it, and it's worth a whole lot more to you than the jail. I think that we we done an audit of we added up what our roads and signs and pipes and all that's involved in our roads. It was four hundred something million dollars. So I know y'all won't get this budget done. <laughs> so I've got another thing. I, I've noticed Ryan, I'm around a lot. Where you're patching, you know, pot small potholes. They're as, they're as rough or rougher than they were before this patch. But when you get a strip from here to Doty, it's as smooth as it can be. Yeah. What's the difference there? Well, with potholes, the theory, I mean, if you just level it off, it's probably going to settle. If you put a half inch more than, than the top of the asphalt around it, your lucky is it'll stay a half inch more cause it, and it causes a big bump. So you can't hardly win. The best way to do potholes is to go in there and square them up. Just take a jackhammer or whatever. We don't have time to do that because if you can square it up, the asphalt don't bounce out. It stays in there a lot better. And then you got, you know, you can use straight edges over the, the square area better, better than you can a little round or an oblong or whatever shape you've got with a pothole. Something else, when you, like your friend of mine lives up on Three Springs. And he, he called and told me that y'all were doing some work up there. He said, when you do one side of the road, and then you come back and do the other side of the road, there's like a crack in between when the two sides come together and that water gets down in there, and that's what tires your road up. If you look at a lot of old county roads like Three Springs, they, they had a paver evidently that was about 14 foot wide, or maybe... 12, 12 to 14 foot wide. Anyway, what they done was they paved more than a lane. Oh, they paved over in the other lane two or three feet, and then they done the rest of it after that. Well, what that does is that puts a joint in the wheel path. You've got to put your joint in the center of the road. But so many of our county roads, I don't know what year they were done or who they were done by or who was the superintendent then, but... So many of our joints are in, a, in the inside wheel path, and it's just because they didn't put the joint in the middle of the road. It's, it's almost it's ludicrous. But anyway, that's where we stand. Like the road shifted. Yeah. No, no, the road didn't shift. They just they paved a third of it over here in this lane, and then they paved two-thirds over here in this lane, and they got the joint exactly where it don't need to be. Yeah. You look at Three Springs and St. Paul. Oh, it's it's awful that way. You got that joint right in that inside wheel path. But um, do you do any sealing? I really don't think that's worth the time and money. Now, if you go in and you pave a road brand new, get it all sealed up and covered up, and go back within three years and put a sealer on that, it'll seal it off. But if you give it too much time, that seal may last a year, maybe two. And it's gone. I notice the state does a lot of that. Yeah. But that's the recommendation all the, the 
the experts that I've ever heard talk about, if you can seal a road off in the, within four years, three or four years of it being paid brand new, you can win that battle, but you can't win that battle after that. Okay. Get into the 6100 group, which is mostly administrative. And I think we put a little bit of increase in office supplies because of the possibility of a computer going out or a new chair or new desk, maybe the need for that arising. Otherwise, that, that 6100 group is uh, pretty unchanged. Then you move into the 6200 group. And that's those first five or six items there. That's where all your labor and, and uh, staff is. And so there are some, there are some uh, guys went on to get their truck driver's license and it's caused some of those, some of those uh, lines to change. But guys, we never spend this because we're, we're dealing with a lot of the year. We're, never, we're not fully staffed. We've got somebody we need to hire so have no fear these these the increases you're showing uh, we're showing there of eighteen thousand dollars they won't live out because we can't stay fully staffed um, and that's basically it. Yeah, there's several several uh, small deductions too then you move to the 63 100 group there's a $20,000 increase. Most of that is um, diesel fuel, tires and tubes, gasoline. I mean, the prices are going up. So that we got, we got to anticipate that. Keep, keep from bothering y'all with the million bud, budget amendments. And then the uh, 6600 6, group is unchanged. Then the big, the big group, the most changes in the uh, last group, the $68,000 uh, 68, group. I'll start with uh, the building improvement, 707. That's where I was telling you we want to split the $80,000 of improvements on the building and, and the facility. 40 in the garbage, 40 here in this budget. And then we get to the highway equipment. Here's, here's what we would propose. Here's what we would like to do with the highway equipment. And that is number, the biggest and number one priority is the tractor. We got a, a New Holland tractor that's about four years old. We got a New Holland tractor that's about eight years old. That newest one, it, it's a what we call a side mower. That mows just off the edge of pavement, that first cut. It's, it's down to like four, three or 400 hours a year. It should be out there not over 900 hours a year. We went through the first round mowing with it, and it went down on us before the round was over with. It was down three weeks. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's worse than our garbage truck situation. I mean, this, this seriously spends more downtime than it does up. And it's just the, the pollution emission elements, the turbo, the diesel, uh, filter, emissions filter, stuff like that. Electronics, the electrical system in this tractor has driven us crazy. We've had it back down to the New Holland dealership in Dixon County, and they've thrown their hands up. They have basically said, y'all need to buy a new tractor. We can't get it fixed. Get it fixed and keep it fixed. So that's what I propose. The Sorry, that, that machine there, you know, you bought it for less money when you got it compared to these others but you take five hours, six hours to get to Dixon. Right. And then they don't know if they're gonna fix it or not. Right. Have, have you looked at if you if you get another tractor, have you looked about like a John Deere up here at Greenville? We have, that's good consideration. And then there's the uh, the orange tractor, what's that called? The uh, Kubota. 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 Yeah. I'm going to go talk to the Greenville Highway Department. They've got, or Green County Highway Department, they've got some Kubotas. And I think they've been pleased with them. I think they perform well. So that's another avenue that we're going to look at if we can get um, the opportunity to 
to be a this situation. So you're talking about one tractor here one for 175,000. No, um, we've got a tractor, and I want to get a concrete saw to go on that skid loader that we were able to buy. That's in, that's, uh, speed our sawing up when we had to saw saw the asphalt, and we've got a trailer that's 15 years old that we need that we pull a backhoe with. We need to replace. We're having to having to do a lot of work to it. Seems like every month something's having to be done to it. But you're just talking about twenty twenty five thousand dollar item though. But all of that adds up to be about 165. I kicked in another 10 to cover the unexpected. So that's that's three items: the tractor, the saw, and the trailer. And the idea is with a new tractor, if that happens, to surplus the new hauling that you've had. Well, the problem. Not, you know, first decision is do we do it. Second decision is, do we purchase with a trade, or do we purchase outright and then try to go the gov deal route, I got or, you. or whatever? Sounds uh, like a trade might be the thing. Well, I know they will trade. John Deere will trade. Now, I don't know about Kubota, but I know John Deere will trade. So, whatever we decide, whatever y'all want to do, it don't right. matter to me. No matter what you buy at this point, they're all going to have the DEF yes. fuel standards. They're all going to have all the things that cause the uh, conditions to come up. Is that correct? Tier four. Everybody's yeah. at tier four now. And has any advancement been made in tier four? Well, experience, time, yeah. time and experience. I mean, it's it's two or three years into existence now, and they work they work out the problems. You know, the first five years. So, I look at the motors. I look at them. They're good tractors. Uh, my understanding, just hearsay, Grand Counties have good luck with them. So I want to go talk to those guys. But well, we good. talked about this um, <clears throat> in one of, one of the meetings that you came and let us know ahead of time. Yes. That we were having a problem. And even that day, it was an animated discussion as far as hearing your complaints about this and uh, i'd like to make a motion that we we accept this i second that uh, the just the, the, tractor, the, tractor, the whole budget yes yes well I, i'm sorry i didn't mean the whole budget just this this line item oh okay yeah, yeah we got more budget to go through you know about the tractor the saw and the, and the trailer. trailer and the trailer okay yeah all right you're going to try to look at the Kubota, maybe? Track? Yes, yes. Can you get the prices on both the John Deere and the Kubota and yeah. the warranty information? Cause yeah. And the trade information. Yeah, yeah. trade information. Okay. You've so. got a big Kubota dealership in Greenville now. Yeah. Yes. Well, basically, we got to find something that's, you know, that new Holland was, I mean, it's not held up, so we don't yeah. want that no more. We want something that's going to no. perform. Okay. On that line, Whatever you buy, we're in a in a tractor. It's a different world today. My brother bought a John Deere, the big in the cab, air condition, everything computer. He started out to bale hay. He just cut off. And the reason he cut off is a little filter in the bottom of the diesel tank that had stopped up. If you're not, if you don't get the chip for it to go down through there and find it, you're down. A day or two days, and then you got to spend a hundred, hundred dollars to get it hauled down to four way in to get it fixed. So, it's kind of what I've noticed they're doing is, if you guys go to these sales, these hundred, hundred, hundred twenty-five, hundred fifty, hundred fifty horsepower tractors, they're selling for a mint because they're going right back out to Kansas in those places out there and using them instead of using all these computers. Cause they got the same problem a little farmer's got. That thing will go down on you. And you know how it is when a man's got to come from the shop out there to fix it. Yeah. And you can have all the chip, you can have all the computers you want to in your, you've got one or two, haven't you, that where you can tell you how to fix it. Yeah. If you, if you don't have the whole package, you won't get that thing fixed. Yeah. But it, they're going to these older tractors. I see them selling every sale out there. And you can buy these new ones, but, you know, 
people just not not going. They're not dependable. These new ones are not dependable. Whether it's a Kubota, New Idea, New Holland, or John Deere, they're all in the same ballpark. Yeah, that's, that's kind of a crapshoot. Yeah, I mean it's. So you're saying go back to ten years, look for a, ta a tractor that's that old? To no, no. I don't recommend that. But use your judgment. You're you're educated for this. We want good warranty, we want good price and everything, but ultimately we want a good track. Yeah. If we pay a dollar more, that's fine, but we gotta get we gotta get dependability out there. We can't have you hauling to and from the shop or down the road every other week. Okay. And we need somewhere that's got a good dependable service department that'll service it at least through the warranty that's close. Yeah. Somewhere that we're not Absolutely. running it four to six hours down the road. Okay. Just to hear that we can't fix it. Yeah. Or your grain will help you. Yeah. Okay. Okay, moving hey, on to. We got a motion so on well, the floor. Uh, do you want to. I, I can withdraw and, and wait for him to finish his budget. Oh, okay. And do it all at once. Is that okay, okay so. with you, Bobby? Yeah, I think it's. Yeah. I just want to get him where he can, he can get out there and get, get these things done. Okay, thank you. Motor vehicles, uh, we're not looking at buying anything but trying to buy a truck for maintenance. Those guys that go out and do the maintenance to wherever the tractor is or wherever the truck is, get a truck that's got some t a toolbox on the back of it, possibly air compressor and a welder. Um, it may be a lot less. We may have overshot this with the $90,000. We might buy one for fifty, but we wanted to. Uh, that's our idea is to get... Uh, truck with uh, like a, free, a 350 size toolboxes around it and compressor and a, a, rail, a welder. That's what our idea is. On would you the, buy that already stocked, equipped, or would you buy the truck and then equip it yourself? Well, I'm going to do a little research, see which would be the best approach. So it's going to cost $90,000 for all of that? It may we not. It may sure. not. Okay. I, Didn't I'm we just, get one T-bone last year? That was a um, one of the asphalt teams. Yeah, uh, this a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah. This truck here you needed for your maintenance. You Maintain sure. equipment and the tractors and all the uh, trucks and stuff. Pit crew's got to have one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we re we reduced the state aid projects. We're gonna get about one hundred eighty thousand dollars a year for state aid projects. Um, We've got $214,000 in there. When we do three springs, that'll cost about 128. So there'll be, um, you know, somewhere around $90,000. We'll get another 108, so we'll be, the starting this 21 year, we'll be at about 270, and that'll do, by your figure, 135, it'd do two miles. So Collinson Ford's our next state aid candidate, and it's about 1.3. Mm -hmm. So uh, the uh, three springs. Collinson Ford. Collinson Ford. Okay, and then the um, uh, other construction is is simply spending that fund balance that we've built. I mean, we don't have any money other than that. So, time this budget's calculated and the revenue's calculated, we'll probably have to take some from fund balance to make it happen. But that's what it's for. So. Any any questions? I'll make a motion to approve this budget. He's. I'm a little bit confused here, Gary. I mean, Barry. Uh, we were on public works, and then we jumped to uh, uh, capital projects. Do we need to have a motion for each of those different sections? Okay. Do we have a motion for uh, 4B, which is the highway and public works? So moved. Uh, Ms. Bryant. I just want to make sure you realize before you that this budget, as does all the budgets with salary, that's 101 and 116, have a 3% COLA down here at the bottom. I saw that. Yeah. And usually you consider that. I'm sorry, you can't. That way we have a 3% COLA added to each budget. So when you approve this budget, you're also approving a 3% COLA. I don't want you to do anything that you haven't considered thoroughly yet for all the funds. Just, but just, just, just to remind you that that is 
Because this is the first. The pages that you have. This is the first budget, isn't it? Yes. Okay. And Ms. Hurst, is there anything else that um, we have not discussed? Of course, you know, Mary's been discussing the expenses. We haven't reviewed the revenues for this fund, which we can do uh, also. If, if, if you want to go back to those early pages. The fund balance uh, at the end of uh, June 2020 was uh, $1,612,508. One In 2019, it was $1,777,814. So it dropped $100,000, but... I think if the state, I th they want you to keep about three months in the, in your fund balance. If that were the case, I think we're looking at in between seven and eight hundred thousand dollars. If we were make sure we have three months of uh, revenue to, or fund balance to cover the expenses. So, but now, Ann may correct me there. No, that's. That would be about right when we talk about 25, your fund balance we hope would cover 25% of the expenditures. Of course, that's about three months, okay. so we're right there with it. Okay. And here we're projecting to end next year, if we do everything that's in the budget, about $962,000. So we would be within that three months you know, window of a fund balance. But that's if you approve everything that's in there. Just want to make sure. And historically, how much have we had left over above that? That can vary. Yeah. Six, 16, it was 389. Mm -hmm. 2017, it was 692. 2018, it was 1,239,000. 1, 2019, it was 1,777,000. Now that's ending fund balance. Yeah. Here in 18, we had a surplus of about five and a half million, no, excuse me, five hundred thousand dollars. The next year, about a little over five hundred thousand dollars. Then last year, there was you know a lot going. Not last year, but the last full year was one hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars draw. This year we expect, if everything goes as we plan, we'll finish the year with a surplus of 116000 You know, to add to fund balance. Yeah. Would anyone like to have more review of the, of the revenues? Let's break that mm -hmm. Right. And we have a motion. And we have a second, is that correct? Do we have a second on that? Second. Who made the motion? Um, uh, Horner. Horner did for 131. 131, yes. Didn't you, Tim? Mm -hmm. Tim? Yeah, Tim. Okay. 131. Tim. Motion. 131. We have a motion and we have a second. Do we uh, have any discussion? Yeah, these, uh, these expenditures, are they coming out of fund balance? Or is that new revenue going to have to cover from that? They, these expenditures don't entirely come out of the fund balance, but how much is coming out of fund balance do you project? Um, what is what to that I, w I would remind you, I know we're going to go over the capital project, the 176 next, but uh, mm -hmm. see, so that's, that's that 176 funds entirely for paving as well, and there's $676,000 in that. So that's uh, sort of where we're getting some more to kick in towards this 10 miles of paving that we want to accomplish. We're blocking the fund balance this year about 760000 the $500,000 that's paid. You said you wanted to take out the fund balance. Yeah. Do I need a, this year we're showing a drop in fund balance of about five hundred excuse me, seven hundred and sixty thousand dollars. 
$500,000 of that's paid, which, you know, Barry addressed earlier with wanting to spend the money for paying. Or is that from carryover from previous years or what? Yeah. Fund balance is built. <laughs> Any other discussion? If not, all in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? Motion carries. Um, let's go back and look at 4A again, if it's okay with everyone, because I'm not a I'm not certain that we approved the entire, we, we approved the two trucks, but uh, do we have a motion to approve the entire 4A? So moves. We got a Second. motion. And we got a second. Uh, any discussion? If not, all in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? Motion carries. Thank you. I think we about I about made a mistake on that. So. All right. So item four C. Highway capital funds one seventy six. Do you want to start with Ms. Hurst on this one? This year in the capital, in this capital highway projects fund, in the year that we're currently in, we budgeted $500,000 of the local government grant that we received from the state of Tennessee. Presently, we haven't spent that, but that's all another source of funds. So right now, we still have in that budget, right at very close to $700,000 in total. But, so if we don't get it spent this year, we'll have that money to spend next year. I mean, I'm, and I'm, this is a question that we've been going back and forth on, is that we need to rebudget that money for next year. Am I right, Barry? I want to make sure. So I'm saying we budgeted it for the year that we're in now. We have not spent it. The money is literally, the cash is literally sitting in this fund waiting to be spent. So if we're going to spend it, not this year, but next, just for budget purposes, we need to rebudget it. Does that make sense? Just, it's in, now it'll be in fund balance going into next year, and we'll just take another, we could budget all of it, or we could budget 500,000, 600,000, just whatever the full balance of that account is. And I'm not sure, and again, I keep looking back at Barry, because I want to find out what we want to budget for next year. If you know all of it or just part of it. Yeah, my recommendation would be to budget all of it. Would be where would we budget to uh, uh, paving or, we or fund had, his fund balance? Well, we would bring it out of fund balance and we would put the balance here we'll, when we get you a new budget. We'll show everything that's in there. And right now, for the year that we're in, we had put it all in highway construction, which includes paving. Okay. And if we budget all of it for next year, if you wish, we can put it all in highway construction. And if that changes, that can always be changed with a budget amendment. Well, this money to set aside, is it in an interest bearing account somewhere? Or is it just money that you it's got with It's to with the trustee. Later? Okay. You know, all, all of these funds that we're talking about it, reside with the trustee. So if there's interest, if there's, depending on how he, man, you know, he, there are some, we have some investment funds, and then we have some <laughs> funds that are essentially have no interest because we're using those funds for, you know, for day-to-day -day type expenses. They show the profit. 
trustee to show the profit. Yes. The, the, if, well, the trustee would if have the, the market account. dies. I think show the loss too. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm if the sorry. market dies with our investment money, we should be seeing the loss too. Won't we? You know, because we see interest going down. Is that what you're? Yes. Yeah. Of course. That's why when we look at the fund 151 coming up, you'll see that we've budgeted less for interest this year. So what we do, and I'm going to ask if this is what you're wanting, if I'm understanding, if you want me to budget the full balance in highway construction, construction if you will highway. say that, <laughs> make a motion. I'd, I'd, I'd make a motion that we did. we got a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Got a second? And then when I give you draft two, you'll see that that's been, that's where, how we will have done it. Okay. And but that can all be used that. for paving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, do we have any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? Motion carries. And just to remind you, we put funds in here instead of budgeting it into the regular account for that five year average that we have to calculate on the highway. So this does not, anything we do in this account does not affect the five-year average. And just to remind some of you on that, five-year average locks you in to certain budget, you know, putting so much into a fund, or in this case, the highway fund. And while that's not a bad thing, we don't want to be committed, a year, you know, years ahead on this. Anything else, Ms. Hurst? No, not in this fund. I'm just, while I'm thinking about it, if I have, you know, if it's okay. You know, I got your motion, uh, Howard, for the recycling. But I just wanted to ask something of what happens in Cock County. We also charge tires being brought in, but we had to pay and I'm not so sure we're, they're not paying to have the tires hauled off. We never broke even, and we researched better places to get tires continually. Now, Cock County is a little bit more off the beaten path on some of the things, so I'm not going to say it's always the same. But we also received revenue from tires brought into, in our case, the Landfiller Convenience Center, and we had to pay to have them shipped out. It well, my, my understanding, talking to them up there, uh -huh. we, we paid them up to $75 a ton. And then one of the three shredders within the state of Tennessee, they, some people would come and say, okay, I want these tires. Uh, I'll give you X amount of dollars for them. And we whatever. never, <laughs> we were never lucky enough to have anybody paying us for our time. Okay. And so that's so why I said, you know, uh, the solid waste kind of made it, made both ends there, you know. Yeah, like, so, and right, yeah. and I'm just going to say, Cock County never broke even, and we looked hard. <laughs> really? Yes, really. Hmm. Having recycled tires shipped out was one of our biggest budget line items. Yeah. Wow. So when we research it, we'll, we'll definitely yeah, I'd like to know. I like to know what the deal is on it now. That's, I just wanted to throw that out there. And Barry, anything else to add to that for uh, 4C? We, uh, vote, we voted on the uh, moving that to the same for next year, but we haven't voted on this as approval of the entire, or is that it? I'm good with either, because it both accomplishes the same thing. But if you, you know, but if you want to go ahead and you know make another motion, then we could do that. I'll make a motion. So. Okay, we've got a motion to approve line uh, 4C. And do we have a second? I'll second. We got a second, Mr. Step. Any discussion? If not, all in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? Motion carries. Okay, item 4D, and this is tab 58, general debt service. I'm just going to do a quick review of the revenues. Uh, we're budgeting less 
than what we actually expect to get this year by a small amount, uh, but more than what our original budget was coming into the year. So we're kind of trying to show that we think there's going to be some increase, but to kind of keep it on the conservative side. So that's just all I'm saying there. I've tried to budget the rest of the items very close to, I'm going to say what we've seen, actual results in the past year to two years. I look at a four-year average and then kind of see which way the trend's going when we're putting these numbers in here. But uh, local op option sales tax for the past several years, few years, we've put a we just put an even $63,000 in this fund from sales tax. And that's what was budgeted for this year, too. Uh, and then everything else, we're trying to kind of get move into that historical trend category. And if we look on the second page of revenues, if you look at investment income, it's kind of in the middle of the page, 4 4 one one zero. That's the interest we receive, and I'm dropping that down because I think just because of the of the interest rates that are going down, I think that that's more likely to be in the neighborhood of what we get. Of course, it's all I missed. Uh, the, the talk is anyway that that the market's flooded with money and there's not we're not making interest. We're not. And it's dropping. <laughs> it's dropped. We make some, of course, because we have a lot of dollars out there. But it's not going to be what we got a couple of years ago. And when the federal government puts in $1.9 trillion into the economy, there's more money, which makes interest even worse, worse less. We're the value of the dollar. And just as an aside, we have received our first payment on the American Rescue Plan. That's I think $6.3 million. So uh, our trustee has that. We've, we're budgeting it, budgeting it, not, I'm going to say we're putting it in a separate fund and it's got its own separate bank account. So it can be, so our custodial duties will be, you know, well maintained there. Is that the first money? Yes, it is. How much we plan on getting total, we know? Right now, our first payment should be half. Now what we're being told on the front is that we received the 6.3. A year from now, we should now, that's a, that's a year from now, we get the second payment. But you know, things could change, but that's what we're being told. First payment now, second payment a year from now. Second payment be half of what the first Yeah, well be, yeah, it'd be the same amount, 6.3. Yes. What was a half for? You said something about a half. We got half of it now. Okay. And then we'll get the second half okay. a year from now. Okay. And we haven't budgeted that anywhere because we're still waiting. We're getting some guidance coming in uh, now on what we can do and how we can spend it. But we need more guidance on what we can do and how we can spend it. Do we get that guidance pretty soon? Is that the 16th? We're hoping Bill is at the meeting for the Tennessee County Services Association. And he texts me, there's some, some, some guidance already released from the comptroller about how Tennessee can help us. And then uh, on, the, on June, I think the 16th, the comptroller is coming into Morristown and meeting with a group of counties and cities to explain more about that. We're hoping to have some. At Walter State. Yes, yeah. and we're hoping to get some really more definite guidelines on it. What the requirements for what you can use it for? Yes. What you can't use it for. We're, can't we're, use yes, it. right now it's pretty vague, right. and we want to make sure we get it right. And we've got three years. Hard to plan when you don't know. <laughs> it is. That's why we're putting it in a separate account, it's separate fund, and so when we get ready to spend it, we'll know exactly what we have. It looks like now the budget as far as the estimated expenditures in this in the uh, fund the general debt service we pull most of the expenditures just straight off with a little rounding 
from the amortization schedules for the debt that we have out there. And that's really why I wanted to bring this slide back. This was in the annual debt service report. And the different colors represent the different debt issues that we have right now. And as you can see, within five years, if things didn't change, if you don't take on more debt of any sort, we'll have paid off everything that we have except the 2020 bonds. In four years, we'll have paid off Series E, 4A, and that's the red. The, the bond that's, gonna last, that's running out the green, that's the new debt, that's 2020. You look at the QSCAB, that's our qualified school construction bonds. That'll be mostly over in 2026 with a very <coughs> small payment the next year. I'm talking $10,000. And then the 2014 bonds, that's a gold yellowish color. That's, we've got only two more years on that and then that will be gone. That was the issue that went to West High School back in 2014 and for some highway work also. Then we have that very, very small USDA loan. Uh, we'll be paying about $40,000 a year on that. Uh, you can't even see it showing up on it, it's so small. What, what did that, what do we have that for, the USDA? It can be used for jail architectural costs. Okay. It was to help with the, with the jail project. And then the bar across the top, now that's supposed to be purple. I don't know if y'all can see how the color shows up, but that's just a, a shade over or right at 700,000 is the revenue that we have coming in to the general debt service fund now. And you can see that there's a gap between what we're paying out and what we're bringing in. That's where we're building capacity to pay for the jail. Now, if in, if in your deliberations in the next you know, few months, several months, next, whatever the time frame is, we'll fill that in with new debt issues. And we're not just trying to, we're putting money, you know, we hear sometimes talking, well, why don't you save for this? Well, this is, this is the mechanism of putting money aside for what we might have to pay off. And so right now, we're, we've got more then we're paying out, but that will change. And if you can remember some of the graphs from Cumberland Securities, the bottom overran that top by a couple of years, and then we got into just a regular payoff system. So I don't know if that's helpful, but right now we're building capacity and debt service. And is that why um, in our proposed budget this year it's $11 million? Is that part of yes. that capacity you're speaking of? Exactly right. Once we take on more debt issues, or if we do, we'll, that will take up you know, the, that balance. So we're, we were built, again, and I know I'm repeating myself, but we're building up capacity there in order to spend it on the jail project, or that was the plan originally. Mm -hmm. So financially, we're in really good shape right now. I, Yes, that's the short answer. <laughs> I'm gonna say, now I know I have never, now of course a lot of this is because we've got money from the state, we got money from the you know, federal government, the CARES Act <coughs> money. We're uh, anticipating more. I have never seen fund balances like this. Now I worked with a more distressed county and I know that and you know, but believe me, having fund balances like this is, and, and you saw the graphs, if you remember, from when Bill presented them. The fund balance was just going uh, on, on particularly the general fund, and which is where we do most of our work. Okay. And in your circles, how, do you have any idea how we compare to other counties in fund balance? I mean, I, that, that's a loaded I, question because everybody's different, but I, I'm just It curious. is. I'm trying to think. The best measurement that I had, and we were like the second, was, and that's in the annual debt service report. I show debt per capita. 
in that report. Okay. And I find that, and I, I pull that number straight out of the audit reports. It's not me figuring it, it's audit figuring it. Which I mean, I think, so I think we're all on the, on the same baseline on that. We had, at that point, I think second lowest debt per capita of all of our surrounding counties. And I'm including severe in that because that's all, I know that sometimes they're a real anomaly, but I did include them in all of our surrounding border counties. Um, that's a good indication. Not so much fund balance, but if you remember the tax rate slide, I think this county, Hamlin County, and Morristown together had a combined tax rate that was second lowest. And the lowest county is McMinn County. McMinn County is the, and Athens, that's Athens, the only county in the state that does not have debt. 95 counties, 94 have debt, one doesn't, and that's McMinn. Now what they do, once they, go, once they and I've you know, heard the stories through the years of how when they finally paid off all their debt, how they had the big note burning <laughs> ceremony. They have been putting, they didn't, did, did they take that money out of the tax rate that was paying off debt? No, they didn't. They put it into a capital projects fund. You know, we have one too, but we're talking very substantial, actually putting part of your tax rate in there. So they were building up about a fund with money that they would, so they wouldn't have to borrow, you know, where they could pay for things just outright because they were, paid off all their debt and they kept putting money in a special fund so that it would be there. So that was, but that one say the only county with a lower tax rate, <laughs> McMinn County and Athens and our surrounding area. And they're a very specific case because of no debt. And, and I'm not advocating not sharing with schools and that kind of thing because I think we try to take care of our school systems really well. I think that's extremely important. But when you do what McMinn County's doing, you know, this is what the comptroller came back and said, you don't share that money. You know, when we borrow money for schools, we have to share it with, you know, we, we share it. And sometimes you share it if you have city schools, you'd have, to, now if we borrow money for our school, that's just us. But in counties like McMinn with Athens, with a school system of its own, you have to share funds. And that, that, that gave them also the advantage. They would share when they wanted to, but they didn't have to. So there's some advantages there. And, I'll, and I've got, this is not debt service, but if I can backtrack a little bit. We'll have to be very careful, and I'm just gonna add this to make sure that when we do dispose of anything, Barry, and you, you, but county audit gets real, very particular about trade-ins. For the most part through the years, we could, couldn't find, I'm not saying we couldn't hear because there, we've got some different guidelines, but basically county audit, they look at a trade-in, that's a disposition. You're getting rid of something. And everybody should have an equal chance of getting that item, not just the dealership. So that's the, the rationale there that it's a separate transaction. You're buying something, you're getting rid of something. And then of course, if you're having to borrow money, you have to figure your interest rate. So those are all three separate transactions when you look at the disposition. So I just want to kind of, that was, it's a good, sometimes it seems like the thing we want to do, but sometimes we're bound by regulations that we can't control. So are you saying that we would be forced to put it out on gov deals or something of that nature to get rid of it? If you read most of the law says if you get rid of something in a county, you have to have a seal bid or an auction. And the seal bid process is very much like we do when we're purchasing, except it's you have people just send in your bids. And of course the auction gov deals is now internet auctions are now approved for counties and municipalities. Uh, so I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, uh, if you find out that we haven't done that, it's because we've tried to research it completely in our particular circumstance to make sure what we can do. But mm -hmm. 
and of course we expect to end the year next year and that's if we don't take out anything more if we start another uh, a bond issue that will begin you know we'll have to make an amendment to pay for it and to show those you know how we book the funds but right now if nothing changes this is what we're expecting do we have a motion so moved. Got a motion do we have a second second motion is second any discussion if not, all in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? Motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Hirsch. Thank you. All right. In the um, announcements on the upcoming meetings, we have May 27th for the general fund. Um, and we have June 1st general fund with the uh, department presentations and discussions, sheriff's department and jail. The and the drug control fund on June 3rd, school department presentation on June 8th, and additional um, school deliberations and open items and budget updates. And then on June the 10th, hopefully, we will have a budget committee recommendation for a proposed budget. And if there is nothing else, we're adjourned.